Hi everyone, welcome to my poster. My name is Octavia and today I'm going to be presenting my work entitled Novel Cancer Driver Gene Identification by Inference of Selective Pressure on Biallelic Inactivation Events. Identifying cancer driver genes is an ongoing cha challenge in cancer research. The identification of previously unknown cancer driver genes is critical for both advancing our understanding of the underlying cellular processes driving oncogenesis and for improving our cancer treatment strategies. The driving question behind this project is, can we leverage the interactions between gene inactivating events like deleterious mutations, copy number alterations, or hypermethylation in order to identify new cancer-relevant genes particularly tumor suppressor genes. The proposed principle driving this project is that if a gene is cancer essential or essential for the survival and or proliferation of the cancer, there is a negative selection pressure against biallelic inactivation of that gene. Conversely, if a gene is a tumor suppressor, that gene's inactivation would be beneficial for the cancer cell. Hence, the co-occurrence of deleterious events like damaging mutations and LOHs, or loss of heterozygosity, is more likely, uh, thus representing a positive selection for biallelic gene inactivation. In order to identify novel cancer driver genes based on these biallelic gene inactivation events, I have developed a generalized linear model for the presence or absence of a mutation in a specific gene in a specific sample based on predicted mutational impact, the cancer type in question, interactions between the impact score and the cancer type, the impact score and the copy number alteration status, in this iteration of the copy number alteration status, uh, or CNA status, we are assessing whether or not there is a copy number loss or whether there is no CNA event. And the model also considers the mutational context. For the first version of my model, I'm using the CAD score to evaluate a mutation's impact. The CAD score integrates multiple mutation metrics in order to generate an overall deleteriousness ranking, where high sc higher scores are more likely to be deleterious. After running this model on data from 8,719 tumor samples across 32 different cancer types, I obtained the p-values of these and performed a Bonferroni correction to get the adjusted p-values for every term or variable in my model that we are interested in. The CAD score cancer type and interaction terms, like the interaction between the CAD score and the, the cancer type head and neck uh, squamous cell cancer, uh, as well as the CAD copy number loss interaction term. I found that there were 545 genes that have a significant adjusted p-value and have a positive coefficient for at least one variable. I generated a heat map using the negative log of the adjusted p-values for every variable for the genes that have significant adjusted p-values for at least three variables. Every row represents a different variable that we're interested in our model, and every column represents a different gene. To the right of the heat map, we can see a cluster of genes that are very significant for multiple variables. From the annotations we can see at the top of the diagram, only one of the genes of that particular cluster are well, uh, is a well-known cancer gene. Uh, the rest appear to not be on any of the reference cancer driver gene lists used for this annotation. In analyzing the results from our model, we asked ourselves, how many genes are significant and have a positive coefficient per variable? We can see that this varies quite a bit from some interaction terms having many significant positive genes, like the CAD, ACC, uh, the interaction term, and some terms have very few uh, positive significant genes that are associated with them, as you can see from the, the chart there. We also asked ourselves, are any of the selected genes significant and have a positive coefficient for one more than one variable? And we can see here, indeed, from this plot, that the majority of the genes, the vast majority of them, uh, are significant for only one variable, and that this number um, uh, drops uh, drastically uh, as we try to see which genes have more and more variables that they are positive and significant for. But in this red bracket, we do see that there are uh, a number of genes that are significant for um, many different variables. Uh, 
So I uh, became curious and wondered what are these top genes, these genes that are significant for multiple different terms or, or variables uh, in this model. And I found that um, uh, in this uh, group of top genes, there are a number that are well-known cancer driver or cancer-associated genes, as we can see uh, from the genes that are, highlight, uh, that are indicated in bold. But there are also a few novel um, novel genes, genes that haven't been already um, well documented in their involvement in cancer. And so these represent um, genes of interest to explore in the future. In terms of my future directions, I want to consider different ways to evaluate the impact of mutations, looking at different mutational um, impact metrics like SIFT, polyphen, phylope, and looking at the position of the mutations. And I also wanted to consider additional inactivating events in the model, such as promoter hypermethylation. In addition, I wanted to evaluate the gene sets that emerge from considering copy number gain as well, not just the loss of heterozygosity or LOH. Uh, thank you so much for um, dropping by on my poster, and please feel free to leave a comment or question.